it, was, it was great to uh, hear about the kind of three projects um, just now that featured um, digital uh, interpretation. And, um, recently, we've just been around um, Highlands and Islands of Scotland with a uh, tour talking about digital interpretation um, with Highlands and Islands uh, Enterprise. And I don't know, I, I, I think that it's something that is really kind of like started to take off. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like escaping from the hands of the professional. You know, there's, I think anywhere you go in the country, there are, are enthusiasts who are making digital models, who are doing um, digital, digital scanning of one form or another and are playing around with these um, technologies. And, you know, that's not surprising, given that, um, you know, the, the state of digital literacy in this country, which, which I think is something which um, often is not thought about um, sufficiently by um, politicians, educationists, or, or anybody. But you know, the, you sit on the, you sit on the number fifty-five bus, and um, there's some uh, fifteen-year-old teenager in front of you, and the speed with which their fingers go on that phone, you know. And if you go back into the 1950s, and that would have been like, you know, oh, here we've got a secretary who's been skilled, who's typing 135 times a second, and that would be something that was really kind of valued, thought of as being um, important. And you know, the, the extent to which people are, you know. Uh, uh, comfortable with wandering around in 3D, you know, using computer games. For people think, well, you know, that's just a game, game type thing, it's not particularly serious. But you forget that the, the, these things were really invented as part of the space race. So they kind of started off from, from sort of hard scientific um, s starting point. And I think that their the application in terms of their heritage is, you know, absolutely huge. So I'm from the University of St. Andrews. So that's my first slide, I'm onto it. Um, and um, that's where we're um, located, and this is a team of people who um, I work with, and at the back is Bess, <laughs> he's a historian, so it's a multidisciplinary team, um, including computer science, archaeology, um, history, and, and, and a lot, um, and this is just like, kind of a slide back, so I'm going to say before, that um, you know, the digital terrain, I think, is changing tremendously for the positive in terms of digital literacy, but also in terms of um, how uh, capable <laughs> devices are. are. So you, you can see everything's getting faster and everything's um, getting better, St Andrews University. Um, and th this kind of like sort of illustrates the point. I mean, if you're thinking in terms of the sort of virtual reality, people put on these, everyone put on an Oculus headset and kind of looked around and done that. So I think the way to think about the state of virtuality, virtual reality today um, is in terms of the, the <coughs> I can't point the screen, is in terms of the brick, yeah. right? You know, think back to the first mobile phones. They were kind of like horrible, clunky, clunky things. And think about how far we've kind of moved forward and got on, got on today. And I think, so I think that, the, you know, where we're going to be in five years time is, you know, kind of the same, but qualitatively better, the sort of, clunkiness and seamlessness and um, oh, how do I do this or how don't I do that, all, all of that will have kind of melted into the background. So it's going to become part and parcel of our lives. And so the thing that, oh, um, Holodeck, um, something, to, something to aim for, like a virtual reality where you don't really know that you're in the virtual reality, except that in a lot of ways, right, the Holodeck <coughs> isn't as good as what we've got now because the guy before me was talking about, you know, technology in your pocket. If you take one of these and you pair it with a bit of cardboard, you can get virtual reality on the hoof anywhere you, anywhere you want and merge it with the real reality, whereas the holodeck scenario was all kind of built in one thing, so it was kind of like the future confined by the past in terms of ideas, but, but there you go. Um, so, the sort of, I, and it's not, don't think it's just for kids, it's for anybody. Anybody can do, can, can do that and can be um, involved, uh, involved in it. So here's an, an example that um, Bess was involved with and you involved with, just to give an idea of the scale of what's um, possible in terms of digital reconstructions. I mean, like a few years ago, we were like trying to do buildings. Um, and worrying about the hardware and, and, and whether it could be supported and all of that sort, sort of thing. So this is based, it's a video, but it's based upon a digital reconstruction of medieval Edinburgh. So, so now it's possible um, to do cities and huge landscapes. We were working with the Tay Landscape Partnership to make a reconstruction of the whole area that is covered by that 
uh, landscape partnership. So it's possible to think, do things on a big scale um, now, and then to take them and to put them onto mobile phones. So this forms the base of a mobile app phone app that you can download from Google, distribution problem solved, um, and use walking around, um, and use walking around <coughs> um, Edinburgh. And all the software is free, so you know, Sketch, SketchUp is free, um, and uh, the Unreal 4 engine that we use to make this is free. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, and easy to learn. So this is the kind of photogrammetry process and we did like a tour. And uh, who, who here has photogrammatized? Wow, that's, that's, that. <coughs> that's a lot of people. But I would swear that once, once you've learned to do that, you've spent the day doing it um, and had a bit of practice, you're in a position to teach somebody else to do it. You know, it's not, it's not a particularly hard thing um, to do. And that's what's happening here. There's a bunch of people in Chile that we spent a day with now teaching their pals, you know, how, how to do it. So it, it's definitely something that has got the, the, the potential um, and reach of moving forward. So this is, um, Oh, it's just some old objects that we, we did scanning around the, with the EU Lab Museums project, which was mentioned in an earlier, um, in an early, earlier session. So we can make loads of these things. Um, but the, so the sort of idea that, that we have in this Cine project, which is a Northern Peripheries project for um, Scotland and um, Norway and Iceland and, um, and Ireland, is that um, let's make a virtual museum infrastructure, right? So in other words, let's make a digital infrastructure that means that all of these activities that are going on, we can move them from being something like, okay, I've got my 3D model, that's fantastic. So what do I do with it now? How do I, how do I use it? And don't get me wrong, Sketchfab, which was mentioned earlier, is fantastic. Um, and it's a bit like, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a bit like YouTube. Round Me is great for um, 360 um, images and, and, and stuff like that. And YouTube itself is fantastic. All these social archive sites, you know, they're, they're fantastic. And you can embed into websites from them and you can share them through social media and so on. But they are all single media, single media sites. And there are, they don't address a bunch of issues that are important, such as like, who owns it, um, such as like, like, um, how are you going to describe the thing? Because it's all very well, you know, having a thousand or ten thousand um, models, um, but the value of that is so massively increased if there's just a little bit of metadata that is associated with them. And I think the hardest thing is actually getting that metadata and once you've got these resources, um, organizing them and so on. And so as part of this project, which is part of Northern Peripheries um, program and CINE that we're um, a partner in. The idea is to try to make a virtual museum infrastructure that um, output will create, well, that's what we're gonna do, our, our create an infrastructure to support the creation of virtual museums, a project, a virtual museum and a toolkit of project digital outputs. So these are some of the sites that we've got involved um, so far, but the idea then is to have this digital um, infrastructure so that once you, we have these digital resources a museum can make a virtual museum out of them and that virtual museum will be kind of part of the web so it will be globally um, accessible but also it will support um, in the creation of interactive exhibits in the real in the real world and it will provide um, an easy way to make a virtual reality app so like, um, if, you've, if you want to make an app that will work with Google Cardboard, um, it really isn't much more difficult than making a web page. I mean, it isn't more difficult than making a web page, but there's kind of like a bit of secrecy that is surrounding with it. So we can kind of put together a set of forms that enables you to put in resources and boom, and out pops an app rather than having to um, go to your go to your local industry expert on the thing and cough up um, 10 or 20 grand 
um, for it. So that's the idea is, is that we can use these different technologies, 360 technologies uh, and, and so on, um, have access through galleries, um, also have a map interface that is, geo that is geolocated um, to very easily build virtual tours. This is using um, Roundme, it's just an image, but, it, it, but you, once you've got a reconstruction, you can just pop in all these different places and just click on them, go from one place to the, uh, to the, to the next going round. Um, Sketchfab, 3D models, so make use of social archive sites um, and flying drones is, is fun and, and, and easy to do um, these days. But then address the metadata issue by having a, um, a form that automatically generates some stuff and helps you figure out what it is else that needs to go in, like title and description and author. Um, and on the metadata thing, I, I think that there's, there's a problem, which is that the people who are in charge of metadata love metadata, um, and the rest of the world really doesn't. Um, and and you know, the big challenge is how to make it simple enough so that, it's gonna, that it will get done um, without making it so simple that it loses its, its, possibility, its possibilities. And I think that, that you know, that's kind of the sort of idea we're trying to do in this virtual museum um, uh, thing. Um, and then the, the second idea that's kind of around it is when you think about virtual museums, you, you, but usually people think about something from the 1995 where you've got a bunch of photographs of different um, objects or different, or different artifacts. So the idea here is that, yes, the display is important, so you know, it's fantastic to see the, you know, the caves and to be able to wander around them and do that. that, that that's important. But the other side of the equation that is important, and this is kind of focused around the museum idea, is what are the processes that would normally be associated with the museum. So collection, um, metadata, description, and just self-help guides. So what these are things that we made, which is like, you know, how to, how to make a virtual tour, how to make um, a, um, a photogrammetry, photogrammetry, so that these guides are then available, available to people. So essentially to try to mirror in the digital world the sort of processes that would go on um, inside, of a, inside of a museum. So that it, and that, we think, lends itself very much to um, collecting with communities. So this is an example of an exhibit that we're building as part of the EU LAC um, project. This is the Pix and Pixels exhibition that we did on oh, Morton Top. Let me just quick look at that. How long have I got? I've got two minutes left. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fantastic. Well, I've, I hope that you've enjoyed talking, uh, listening to us and got an idea of kind of what we're trying to do. Um, if anybody wants to kind of like be involved, we would love to, you know, uh, help community groups and to let them use these resources or you could maybe contribute to the resources in some way. So we really help them that. It would be great for that if there was, if there was interest. Um, and I think I'll just give my last minute back to the questions. Thank you very much, Steve.